What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today I am here with a very special collab. As you see in the title, it's called The Sisterhood of the Traveling Blythe Doll. And that's a play off the movie Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants where a group of friends share a pair of pants while they separate for the summer and share their adventures. So we decided to do that with this Blythe Doll. We have named her Jet Sharon and Jet for Jet because she's a traveler, and Sharon because we all share her. There are 12 owners. We each get her three weeks apiece, leaving that last week for travel. After she travels to the US, she then will travel to Puerto Rico, and then to the UK for a while, and then back to the USA to do it all over again. Each owner will document their experience in some way so we can all see her throughout the year. She will come with her stationary suitcase, the outfit right now that I'm going to put on her. Before sending her off, each owner will dress her up in an outfit for the next owner to take and then replace and then so on. She will also come with her rider die travel buddy rider. I also got another one for my mini me. So if you want one for your doll before Jet comes to visit you, I will leave the link to this little buddy down below in the description. Also, what will come with her is a journal that you can document the things that you customize on her. And you can also write the date that you get her and the date that you ship her out. And anything else you feel like putting in her little passport journal. I made a makeshift one here, but the next owner is a master crafter. So Denise is going to make a better one and just stick my entry in there. But I think that will be very neat um my customization is going to be the pull chain bead and i'm going to add a couple of little um charms to the end leaving a lot for other people to do that's way better than what i can do anyway and she'll have her hand changes that will be in a nice pink bag there are certain things that we will leave be with jet and that will be her face plate and her hair we will not cut at all we can style the hair and we can do the neck joints the pull strings the eye chip changes we can do sleepy eye and the lids can be painted the only rule to this collab is to have fun and have her out to her next owner by the 21st day that you have her some tips for the owners i would plan ahead on what you will do with jet as the three weeks go by real quick also i would plan having your replacement outfit for when she is there so you can replace it if you can meet in real life to make the switch that is all the more fun so it is all up to the owner on how they want to be creative with this doll. I just think this is one of the most funnest things I've ever done. I hope to get to know all the ladies and where they live and what they do during the week. I'll tell you, I had fun with this vlog. It's just filled with things I did with her throughout the three weeks that I had her. I tried to involve her into as many things that um, I did as possible. Now, time to unveil the 12 owners. We have, in order on her route, Jamie from Let's Talk About It with Jamie in Massachusetts. That's me. <laughs> and then she's going to be going to the Denisa One that lives in New Jersey. Then she will be off to Elise Explosion, also in New Jersey. Then off to Michigan to see Gigi Mamel. Then she is going to Missouri to see Dolls Rescued. Then she'll be off to see Jean Stratton in Texas. Then over to Mississippi to see Gayla from Lala and Toys. Then headed over to Ambrosia's Dollies to see Cynthia in Alabama. Then she's off to see Evelina Evergreen in Georgia for her last stop in the U.S. before she shipped off to Puerto Rico to see Doll Joy Lissa. 
After three weeks there, she's going to be shipped off to the UK where she will be visiting J Dolls UK for three weeks. And then she hits her 12th owner in the UK, Serenata. She spends the last three weeks of her tour in the UK and then Serenata will ship her back to me and we get to do this all over again. So let's see what I got into. Okay guys, struggle soup. We're gonna make struggle soup. So, have you ever like bought a doll at like Walmart instead of your dinner? Yeah, I do it all the time. So this is what I came up with so we can have more fun with dollies because yeah, we always need more money for dollies and I'm sorry, this soup is so amazing. So here we have Jetem, my mini me. Well, it's Jem, but I call it Jetem. It sounds better. And then we have our Jet. She got to wear the apron and the hat because she's, um, you know, not here for very long. So yeah, let's talk about this soup. So I usually pay a dollar for each of these cans except for the zucchini because the zucchini is just slightly more expensive but i wanted to treat myself with this struggle soup okay here we are at the pot and all i did was add diced potatoes and a can of mixed vegetables i got um and you can get any mixed vegetable you like i just like this it makes it heartier this right here i got it's crushed tomatoes with the italian seasonings mushrooms because i like them again whatever vegetables you like i get the dollar cans so this soup is like literally like five to six dollars the most and it feeds me all week and my boyfriend honestly so yeah so this is what you do you just simply put it in the pot now you can doctor this soup up with things in your fridge that you already have that everybody um, has. It doesn't have to be so bland. So I'm going to put a couple of bouillon cubes in there just for the salt taste and, you know, the beefiness. I think bouillon, um, beef bouillon goes best with um, tomato based soups. So yeah, add your few bouillons to however salty you want your soup. Next, I got this camp mix, which is awesome. It has all your garlic, salt, pepper, and other seasonings in there all together in one. So you don't have to have all these different containers like, you know, when you go camping. Um, I put some ground thyme. So you're going to put some um, dried herbs in first, and then you can put fresh herbs in last, like if you have some from the garden, which I had some from the garden. Um, but if you don't, that's okay, because this is struggle soup. It's supposed to be easy. So now next, this is what actually makes it amazing, is just a dollop like this of sour cream and a pad of butter, because it makes the sour cream just blend a little bit creamier. And then finally, just add two cups of water to that, so you can have some broth. Stir a couple of times, cover. Boil for about 30 minutes, stir again, put it on simmer for about 10 minutes. Okay guys, here is the finished product. Look at that pad of butter just melting in there, bringing it all together. Yummy, 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 yummy. So, uh, I'm gonna have a bowl. Look at how good this looks. Can you believe it only cost me $6 and hardly any like prep time? Love it. So let's go see what it tastes like. Yeah, so struggle soup is a win. If you want to buy a doll instead of dinner, doll instead of dinner, that rhymes. Make struggle soup any way you want. So today I've decided to go down into town in my hometown and show you what my hometown's all about. I am from New Bedford and it's the Whaling City, um, you know, like the whole Moby Dick, you know, story. We are the home of the cobblestone streets 
and um, which is kind of hard to walk on when you're filming. I almost fell <laughs> a couple times, but that's okay. But yeah, and we are the, yeah, like I said, a fishing industry. When I was younger, I always thought that movie, um, Popeye, the one with Robin Williams, I always thought that that movie was shot where I lived because it, it just seemed so familiar to where I live. But yeah, so I've decided to take you downtown on a summer evening on what it's like to enjoy your time where I live. And I brought Jet with me, obviously, and we're gonna take pictures and I'm gonna see if I can get people to hold her. Um, we have lots of art in New Bedford. We have lots of Portuguese people and lots of um, fishermen's and um, ports and piers and yeah, if you were ever in New Bedford and you wanted to take a little date night, this little parking lot right here is a little like area where you can, you know, hang out by the boats and grab some food, ice cream, coffee, dinner, and just bring the family and hang outside. It's uh, really nice. And then we're gonna go over to downtown where they have AHA night where all the local artists and vendors come out and we celebrate the third week of the month. So let's go see. This is one of my favorite statues in New Bedford. It's a picture of a family, a fisherman family, a statue of a wife and her son and her daughter saying goodbye to their daddy. That's a fisherman. And uh, yeah, it's sad because you never know if they're going to come back because that is something that goes on around here. And here are his boots over here. It's a beautiful statue. It's my favorite. The woman is, you know, beautiful. Here's a nice picture of the back. I love the back. And around it are the names of the fishermen from the New Bedford port that have never came home to their loved ones. So in this parking lot, you have the black whale, which it's like indoor, outdoor dining, and you can over look the boats and you know nice easy parking we have maricel's coffee shop they are famous for their chippies trust me you're gonna have to order one when you come here a cute little fried little shack over here you can get scallops fried clam beer wine lobster rolls fish sandwiches and like i said we are a fishing industry so our fish is just the best the best but i opted for a hot dog and a pistachio frap at this ice cream stand.
So during most of the time I had her, it was really hot or raining outside. So I did feature Jet in as much videos as I could. So she's in an upcoming video for a lakeside shoot with my Blythes. Stay tuned for that next week. And also I am doing a video on all my Blythe dolls and why I named them what I named them and the history behind them and all kinds of fun stuff next week. So stay tuned to, for that because I wanted Jet involved in that video as well. Okay guys, this is the 21st day I've had her and I'm ready to pack her up. So this is the box I went with. It's very light and durable, and we decorated the inside like it's a room for her, nice and pretty. I did a little last minute journaling, and I wrote down a few personality traits, like I found out her favorite color was green, so I wrote that in the journal, and I signed the day that she left, which was the 21st. So the first of the 21st I had her in, it went by so fast, so I advise you to keep her the three weeks um, unless you really have to, you know, send her off for other reasons. But yeah, it's it's so fun. I'm going to be putting some bubble wrap in here so um, she stays nice and snug so she's not going around. And I did add her little um, face, plastic face plate. I was just kind of doing a little dry run here on um, shipping her. What I did was I took some bubble wrap, which can be reused from owner to owner if we unwrap her right. I just nicely wrapped her in this and then I put her in this plastic poly bag that I got at Walmart for a dollar, but you can also get them at your local post office probably for like a dollar fifty or something like that. It just keeps it um, dry from the rain and you can slap your label right on top and it should be protected. You can also add a sticker of your state to the black box. That will be fun. Also, check out the owner's links down below if you want to follow Jet on her year-long journey around the world. Your last step will be grabbing the tracking number and sharing it with the owners. Our next stop is the Denicer One in New Jersey. So if you like this video, please press like, subscribe, and I'll see you later. Bye.